there's one term our culture has little appreciation for, it's limitations. And that's exactly what makes Kelly Capick's newest book, You're Only Human, worth the read. For The Colson Cent, I'm John Stone Street with Breakpoint. Intentionally or implicitly these days, people are told to ignore their physical, interpersonal, or spiritual limits. Even in Christian circles, it's common to push our limits and constantly feel exhausted or guilty as if we haven't done enough for God or His kingdom. Dr. Kelly Capick, a professor of theology at Covenant College, provides a compelling counterthesis to this. Quote, Many of us fail to understand that our limitations are a gift from God, and therefore, good. And that produces in us the burden of trying to be something we're not and cannot be. Now, to be clear, human limitation is different from the idea of sin or even of fallenness. As a feature of time and space, limitations are a built-in aspect of God's design. We need things like food and rest. We're not created to do everything by ourselves, even something as simple as finding our own individual identity. Ultimately, we are dependent creatures, and our dependency is meant to draw us closer to the God who created us. Recently, Dr. Capick joined my colleague, Casey Leander, for a special episode of the Breakpoint Podcast. Their conversation is an especially relevant counterpoint to the dangerous assumptions that are shaping our world. One of these assumptions has to do with physicality. Seized by what some have called a Gnostic impulse, much of modern life downplays physical limitations. Digital technology tells us we don't need to go anywhere to be with people. We sexualize everything and in the process destroy the possibility of normal everyday physical touch. The most extreme example of this Gnostic impulse is transgender ideology, which tells people that they can only and finally feel fulfilled outside of the physical realities of their biology. But in God's original design, the physical world was created good. We flourish best, not when we transcend our God-given physical limitations, but when we live in accord with them. This doesn't mean everything's perfect. After all, some of our limitations are caused by the fall. However, even in a world like ours, infected by evil, Christians have hope in a renewed physical creation. God loves our bodies. We should too. Capic also highlights the idea of faithfulness in the Christian life. Too often, we're driven by a desire to do everything, to ignore the limited resources of time and energy. As Capic writes, it was Ben Franklin who said time is money. And as Christians, we have baptized that. All of this makes me wonder what Jesus would make of modern busyness. Son of God, of course, never shied away from challenge or difficulty, but he did spend an inordinate amount of time simply praying and resting. As the agent of creation and as the second Adam, Christ sets the standard for what it means to have a life well lived. A third takeaway from this book, You're Only Human, has to do with the church, the bride of Christ. Here's Dr. Capick again. God extends his love, provision, and values through the people who make up his church. His offer to be a refuge and strength frequently comes through his church. When he wants to bring a word of grace, a safe hug, a warm meal, it often comes through his church. And even when the church cannot do everything itself, it keeps seeking to promote the common good. The Christian walk demands Christian community. And our collective limitations also point to something significant about our human limitations. Dr. Capet continues, quote, The central mission of the church is to point people continually to the Messiah. He alone fully reveals the love of the Father and pours His Spirit out on us. The goal of all our good efforts is to draw people to the embrace of the triune God, not to serve as a replacement for Him. All the gifts we exercise must ultimately point back to the true giver. This is why Christians can read the news without losing hope. This is why Christians can accept their limitations without despair. We cannot heal or restore our broken world in and of ourselves, but Christ can, and He will, and He uses us at times to do it. In that respect, our limitations aren't weakness. It's what makes us rely on the only true source of our strength. For the Colson Center, I'm John Stone Street with Breakpoint.